Hello, welcome to Mark's Garage. I've come out today, uh, it's the day after when I did a little bit of filming yesterday, and I just had a, an idea to just weld those washers onto there, um, purely so that when I'm offering this up to the car underneath, I don't have to mess about with a nut and a washer, the washers will stay in place and the, the nuts can just follow in. So just trying to take care of little simple things that I can do to make the job easier. So a couple of little tacks on each one, same on the other side, and um, that's ready to, this is ready to be fitted now. I can offer the manifold onto the engine that's going into the truck and get ready to put the engine in. Okay, I just thought I'd show you that. Just another little... A little idea that takes no time at all and um, can help things in, in the future. I have fitted the manifolds to the French motor with the brass nuts. You can see it's ringing wet with condensation. It's another day where it's gone a bit warmer today. There's the motor waiting to go in. I've got it suspended up there while I put the exhaust manifolds on. Um, the truck is sort of ready to receive it. I'll get it sort of in contention, then I'll shove the jack under the gearbox as it is part way in. And I want to remember to fit the oil pressure gauge line. And I've got to get that anti-chatter rod in. That anti-chatter rod down there. That one needs to go in as I'm offering the engine in. Right now, let's um, see if I can get it in. I, w I won't bother filming it because you've all seen it all before. I showed getting it out in quite a lot of detail. Putting it back in is just a reverse of the same routine. Okay, back in a bit. You can see the motor's too high. Okay. This isn't going particularly well because the engine crane, the engine crane is stuck on a piece of concrete, so I'm having to move the truck forward, which is very much less than ideal. If I can just get this engine in and sitting down on the gearbox, and sitting down on the engine match rather, I'll, you know, be a bit happier. I just fired the camera up so I got a light, really. What's that now? That's too low, is it? Okay. Yeah, it's miles too low at the back, isn't it? Still too low at the back. Still too low. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna have to lift the gearbox because I can't get the engine lower at the front. The engine is high, isn't it? That's more or less where I started off. Okay, back in a bit. Okay, I'm going to have to regroup on this job because it's just not working. managed to lift the anti-chatter rod up and put that into there. I'm hoping it might be somewhere near and lined up. Hard to tell. I'm 
got the gearbox lifted all the way up as far as I can. Oh, it's not far off. I'm looking down there now. So let's um, see if we can slide the engine back a bit. So it's a little bit off to the side, isn't it? Let's try putting it in top there. Give the engine a good shake about. I wonder if I got the gearbox a bit too high. Okay, it needs to come back, but it's it's at least gone onto the splines. Can you see? It started in the splines. It might be that it's um, misaligned a bit, so I think I'll I'll try try gently lowering the transmission. But at least it started. What I don't want is for it to pop out. in it look bastards popped out Fuck it up. in you see so I've got to lift the front in effect haven't I Ow. bang on head okay, let's get it okay. let's try that That's closer. Just turn the shaft to that sp with that spike. Okay, that feels like it's gone now. What I don't want it to do is to pop out again. I just pushed it back with the lever. I'll leave that, I'll leave that lever wedged in there. That'll stop the engine pulling forward. Trying to get it so that it, the bolts will start. I used one of these chisels, one of those, and I went in there and managed to find the hole. You know, it was like off to the side, like that down there. So I wobbled it around till I was able to get that bolt to start, and then I wobbled it around again and was able to get that bolt to start down there. That one. So those two are in now and tightened up. So, and that is now aligned properly, you know. So that was a handy little thing. I, I should have put those little stub pins in that I have. I'm not sure where they are though. So the jack is out from underneath anyway. Two bolts are in there. So I, I can lower the front of the engine down onto the engine mounts. And take the stand out of the way and kind of call it good but that was a struggle that was I've got a bit of a cold and I'm, I've got I've, I feel that, that like it's affected my strength today but 
that has been a struggle uh, and I was using this lever to push the motor back you can see I'm not a million miles off the engine mounts here so the engine just needs to move to the side a little bit and I can lower it down Okay, the engine's sitting down on the mounts. It's wet under there, look. The engine's wet, everything's wet. So I'll, I'll leave this on and um, I will probably just support the weight of the engine while I get the engine mounts in and get the rest of the bolts in. But it's got a couple of bolts at the back, it's resting on the engine mounts. I think it should be okay now. And then tomorrow I'll, I will start putting everything back together. I'm not going to have a long session today because I do feel pretty tired. Okay. Righto. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'll bring you back, as always, when there's more to show. Cheers then. Bye. Hello, I'm back out again now, it's the next day, and I've just put that um, engine mount bolt in there, and uh, I'll show you how I did it, because it worked quite well actually, bear in mind I've got no um, radiator in, that looks like it's lined up doesn't it, so that should be okay, there's the bolt, there's my socket. Now I've got it on an extension like that, right? The bolt, unfortunately though, goes a long way down the socket. Right? So the first thing I did, I put something in the socket to stop the bolt from going too far down. Okay, I'll show you that. I just looked in the drawer and found this. That sits in there, just holds the bolt there like that right so you might not be able to see what I do but you'll get the idea just take the nuts and washer off so there's my bolt so I'm going to reach underneath shove shove that up hold it up and then just put the nut on so there's the bolt see you reach underneath, get your finger on the end of it, push it up, then put the nut on the top. And that just worked quite well. Same going on my back underneath the truck. You know, obviously it helps that the radiator's not there. So that's resting down on the mounts now. I will, I'll put a, a T-bar on that and um, tighten these up. I hope you saw what I was doing. I was probably got my arm in the way, but you get the idea. Okay, back in a bit. I've just swapped the distributor between this motor and that motor. I'm just looking at this um, rotor arm. It was like that. I thought, well, that don't look right. And then I touched that there. I thought, well, that don't look right. It's not very good, is it? So, yeah. So that will go. That'll get chucked. I mean, it did run, so maybe that can just go in the get you home spares pile, but maybe I'll try and JB weld it in or something just to keep it as a spare. I've got this one. This one's like one of those brown ones, which is pretty old, but it doesn't appear to be loose. So I will go with this. Looks like it's got a bit of a twist on it. I'll dry it off a little bit, it looks a bit damp. Okay, I'll put my gloves back on. Done the engine mounts up, put 
the plug leads on. I've taken the leveller off, put the manifold box in. And I'm just going to use this to look down there. Just to make sure nothing's been dropped down there. No, everything's looking good. So, that's it. That was why I turned the camera on, to be honest. So, I've just dusted that this face off. I'm just going to... I'm just going to put the carburetor on. And I, I've done my usual thing. These are clumped into um, left and right. I know it's the other way around, but you know, you talk about it from that side. And the end ones are marked with a red dot. There, and there, and there. And then the middle ones, you can't mix them up, they won't reach. But what I've done, I've started looping the wires up on the outside of the motor to keep them away from there because that can get very hot okay right now back in a bit i'm just slowly connecting things up now then i'll put the radiator in put the exhaust on and a few other things and that's you know it'll be ready to run hello here's a little hint or tip if you will uh, the the dynamo, the generator there, is down as low as it'll go. Uh, I'll, I'll just slip this off. Okay. Right, it's partially on. It's on the bottom. It's on the left hand pulley, left hand, right hand, I should say. Now this is this will go on here, but it's quite difficult. It's just quite difficult to get it on. I'll kind of force it on. There it goes. Yeah, that went. Okay. Now let me show you something else. Right. So let's say you put it on the bottom. Put it on that one there, the right hand one. Put it on the dynamo or generator. Watch this look. It goes on there. Easy. See. Um, I guess it's just because of the amount of wrap. This is more of a wrap, you know, it's, it's harder, I can't even, I'm not pretending to struggle, but just by hand, I can't get that off there, whereas I can get that one off there. You can, can you see what I'm trying to show? Just easier to get it on and off from there, or there I suppose, but just a little pointer, something that I've noticed messing about with these motors. Okay, righto, back in a bit. Here you go, I'll put the um, carburetor on, connected up the fuel pipe, um, put the vacuum pipe on, put the water temperature sensor on. Um, the generator wires need to be connected, but I've only just put that on. So I'll lift that up and uh, get it tensioned up and um, put those wires on as well, and then connect up the carburetor. I might leave that actually, I need to think about that. That's because of wanting to move the pedal to get the car, the mats in and out. I've connected up the, this, this, this is the wire from the ignition module to the distributor. And that's just a, an O-ring there, look, an O-ring wrapped around the, that's just an O-ring there wrapped around the wire, look, and that just hooks onto there. So it just keeps the wire out of harm's way. Okay, right now, nothing ground shaking, but just showing you the logical progress. Back in a bit. I don't know. I don't know if anybody else would have the same setup, but this is an easy place to pry the generator up to tension the belt. You can get it. I don't know if anybody else has the same, a similar setup, but if you have, this is a handy little hint. Um, this is an easy and handy way to pry the generator up there. That might be a little bit too tight. Having said that, these are ball bearing type pumps, but you can just press the belt like that and it'll move the generator down. 
So I think that'll be all right like that. See what I mean? You can you can just uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. a little bit tighter. That's all right. Tighten it up now with a big spanner. There you go. Okay, right, another little piece of the jigsaw. Okay, back in a bit. Let's see if I can get the one st Okay, that's not going to work. Let me see if I can get the gasket to stick. Let's just concentrate on this side. Start a nut there. I know I'm blocking the camera, but it's really awkward under here. Okay, right. Let's see what's going on on this side. Okay. Okay. Right. It's nowhere near fitting. Okay, I'm going to have to take those washers off. The washers didn't work. It's too much tolerance stuck up between the two engines. That's, it does go on, so I will lower the one side and put a gasket on. Here are my gaskets. Just fingertips. That one started. Okay, so I've got three. So I'll just I'll have to look and find the fourth nut. Where's that go? There's my wash. I've got to get that nut on there now. That one up there. I can't quite get my hand up there we go. Okay, just do it with my eye. I've got my eyes shut actually, just do it with my eyes shut by feel. There we go. Okay. So I can get on those two. Easily. That one, that one there was the awkward one. Let's see. Can't quite reach it, but I think it will reach it. Let's try and get that one there. Ballpark. Is that on? Is that on? Oh, I just got dripped on. Okay. I think that's on. That extra length just got the drill below the axle there. Okay. 
that's on it ain't um, the nuts the studs are a bit short to be honest wonder if I'd do better to put thinner washers on no I can't really let's just leave it at that they are done up I might just get a feel for them with a ratchet okay right okay let's call that good so there's that side is there they're slightly better access and just about okay access here you can see like with the pipe and the axle it's not great and across me I suppose you could come up like that okay well that's in place anyway still not great is it it's far easier doing the engine swaps on the sedan than it is on this but anyway hey ho just generally looking about The chassis seems to be okay, considering it's just, you know, surface rust. Okay, right on. Let's um, regroup then and tackle some of the other exhaust things. Right on. Okay, I'm going to have a go at that one next. Right now, back in a bit. The truck's back down on the ground. The hood is back on its brackets. The engine is in. The engine mounts are done up. I did notice there's a washer missing off the one side. I'll just leave that off for now. Um, so there's only a few things left. I've put all the exhaust on on that side. The exhaust that runs down the side. That went on okay actually, it wasn't a struggle like I struggled with the crossover pipe. And that crossover pipe was less than a struggle. I did notice actually there's an easier route onto that awkward bolt up through near the axle so next time I'll be able to get on it a bit easier. Okay there's only a few things left, um, choke, throttle linkage, spring, battery, cables, you know, which is five minutes, isn't it? Um, bumper blade, um, grill, centre. What's in the What's in the back of the truck? Oh yeah, mats, gearbox cover. There's the centre piece. That'll just it just it only just needs two bolts at the top. Battery. So that's it. Might as well just do all those and call it good. Just a little bit too late to go for a road test. Um, I've got to put water in it as well, of course. Got to put coolant in it. Okay. But, you know, the, the engine swap is proceeding. Proceeding well. Righto. I'll bring you back when there's more to show. Hello. 40 Ford overriders then which is the correct way up is the slightly more pointed end down and the fatter end up or is the pointed end up and the fatter end down right I'm not asking the question I'm going to tell you that is the correct way up. The slightly blunter end up, the slightly more rounded pointed end down. I have this on authority from a very learned gentleman at Ford Barn, Mike Kubarth. He told me that information because I asked him specifically. And he has written the book about the 40 Fords. Okay, this is a 41 pickup and it's completely just my my rendition of it, but nonetheless, if you if you do want them right, the chunkier end is upwards and the thinner end is downwards. Okay? Hope you find that interesting. I'll fit get them fitted up and show you what they look like. 
This is slightly easier said than done. Okay. Hope the camera caught that. So I could. No, I don't think it did, did it? Okay, I managed to hook that on there. Okay. Oh, jeez. I'll leave it like that because it keeps the pedal high and then that's easier to put the mats in then. And then I'll, once the mats are in, I'll lift it up and put the linkage on. Hello, right. I've put oil in it and I've put coolant in it. The battery's on, everything's hooked up, accelerator's hooked up, chokes hooked up. I might as well try and start it. I'm not going to drive it because it's a little bit dark now and it's just trying to rain as well a little bit. 